So it's been 563 days, 18 months or so, since the WordPress editor Gutenberg released with WordPress 5.0 a long time ago, back in December 2018. So the question is, how's it going? Is it the end all be all of creating content online? Is it worth throwing away or is it somewhere in the middle? In this video, I wanna give you my honest opinion, three great things about Gutenberg and three things I'm not so big of a fan of in this video. So let's go ahead and dive into it right now. Hey guys, John here from Incomesh.com, helping you find and master the perfect tools for your next project. And in this video, I wanna go ahead and dive into Gutenberg and what I honestly think about it. But before I do that, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell to be notified when I go live. I create content as frequently as I possibly can to help you become a better, smarter digital marketer online. So let's dive into it here. So the three great aspects, three things I really like about Gutenberg. Number one is simply that it is an excellent platform for blogging. So if you're creating long form blogging content, uh, it's to me, it's a breath of fresh air to write in Gutenberg as compared to the previous WordPress editor. And it's for a number of reasons. One, the ability to just quickly go through and I never have to really touch my mouse anymore when I'm creating content in Gutenberg. Once you master the keyboard shortcuts, you can go through and quickly use that little backslash key kick out your content exact, uh, exactly like you want to. And with rap repetition and practice, it'll become an absolutely natural way to create content. I dare say it's even more natural for me to create content in Gutenberg than it is in Microsoft Word because I can quickly put buttons in, I can add columns, I can do all that, and it's super intuitive. I don't even draft my content in a word processor before bringing it in to my website. Now, that's a little risky. You don't always have to do that. But for me to be able to go and add the images directly in, do the headings, and create everything as I'm going, it's super fluid, and I think they've done a fantastic job at nailing that workflow. Benefit number two is it's a lightweight and a high performance page editing experience. So if you want, if your biggest priority is to have a lightweight, fast and clean website, the Gutenberg editor is the best show in town because it's built in already. It's part of the core WordPress files. It's not additional functionality or plugins you need to add in. So it's the least bloat you can put onto your website. Now other page builders like Elementor and Thrive and Brizzy and all these other guys, they do their best to optimize, but ultimately they're adding more code, more optimization, like more, more content into your website's back end, which has to slow it down just a little bit. So if you want the fast ex experience, the editor in Gutenberg is tops. The third benefit is there's a ton of extensions and block libraries and integrations with other plugins that are that have to prioritize Gutenberg first. So let's say, for example, you want to be a food blogger and you want to be able to put recipes out there and do them quickly and easily and make them look super professional, you can search the WordPress plugin repository and find hundreds of plugins that can quickly with a, dra like a drag and a drop add a recipe into your Gutenberg powered blog post super simply. It's absolutely the best way to do that versus trying to build it all from scratch using a page builder. It's fantastic for things like that. Also, if you want to sell online courses, you know, Learn Dash, Lifter LMS, all the main players, they have built in integrations that work wonderfully with the Gutenberg editor. And if you're using a page builder, it might be kind of hit or miss and you might struggle to figure out how to make your other plugins work well with your page builder. So Gutenberg definitely is awesome at that. So now let's go into the cons here. So first and foremost, what you see is what you get that whole WYSIWYG thing that's important these days you know we're all getting a little bit spoiled like we're not coders anymore but still the idea of being able to quickly and easily see what you're doing in real time we're becoming conditioned to want that and Gutenberg is getting closer but it's certainly not as advanced with as other page builders at giving you that full what you see is what you get experience so you'll find yourself quickly like putting out content over on the front end editor and then kicking it over and previewing it to see, did I nail it? Did I mess it up? Does it look weird? And you're doing this back and forth ping pong game to design your page in Gutenberg. Not so fun. Con number two is while there's all these amazing blocks and extension libraries and, and integrations, you have to be careful not to go overboard. Uh, depending on your host, depending on which plugins you use and if they're from reliable sources, you should be fine with adding several on there and not noticing a huge impact on your website performance. But if you bring in one plugin from some guy that hasn't updated it in two years, it might break your site, it might slow things down, it might even introduce a vulnerability that you can get hacked in your website. So 
while tools like Elementor and Thrive, they have their own ecosystems. They're bringing in functionality that you can kind of trust because it's all coming in in this really well-developed, well-maintained environment. When you start getting into the WordPress world, you're in this full-on open source environment where anybody can put anything out there. Um, there are some checks and balances, but you get what I'm saying here, right? Like they don't have to maintain it, especially those free plugins. Just be a little bit cautious and not adding in too much and uh, creating those conflicts over time. And downside number three is simply mixing the experience and the user uh, experience for your visitors on your site. So if you're what most people do is they'll have a page builder like Elementor for their most important pages, for their sales pages, for their home pages, their about pages, things like that, where they really want to nail that design and get it just right. But then they'll have the Gutenberg editor and maybe a few uh, block plugins on top of that for their blog posts. And so they'll bang out their content there, but they'll always have these posts. But what happens is, at least if you're OCD like me, you'll see your buttons look like this on your pages, but then your buttons look like a little bit different on your posts because they're different page building kits, right? Like the Elementor button is going to look different than the Gutenberg button. And that's okay for most people, but you're going to, in general, just find that um, you'll want to be able to replicate what you have on one building experience with the other, and there's always going to be those differences and individualities it's not right or wrong it's just uh, it's going to be an inconsistent look overall now what you could do to fix this is decide to go all in on one experience you could decide hey i'm going to deal with the downsides of gutenberg and create all my content there so at least it's consistent maybe or you can go the other direction i'm going to go all in on a page builder and everything on my website is going to be built in thrive architect or elementor pro or whatever the case might be and that can work as well Neither one is really right or wrong. My personal preference is I like Thrive Architect. It works well with my mindset as an engineer. I just kind of work with all the knobs and dials that have that it has there. And so I do most of my content there. But in certain cases, uh, Gutenberg is still going to be a, the way to go for some of my content. So that's it for me, guys. That's my top three and bottom three ideas and feelings about the Gutenberg editor. I'm curious what you think. So is are you doing all your content in Gutenberg? Do you mix and match? Let me know what you're doing down in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.